What's up everybody? Andrew Mahones here with Darium's Competitive Pokemon. Today I'm going to be showing off Alex Kreckler's Greninja Break deck from the top eight of the North American International Championships. Now before any of you guys call me out on this, I do have one proxy Greninja Break in here. This is a World Championship card from last year. That's because I lent my Greninja Breaks out to my friend Jimmy Pendarvis and he never gave them back. So Jimmy Pendarvis, if you are out there, send me my Greninja Breaks. I am borrowing these two for the video. Dariums didn't have one in the shop, so I don't think y'all mind too much because really you get to see two real ones and I'm just going to talk about how the deck works and what makes this deck unique from all other Greninja lists. I really love Alex's Greninja list. I think he constructed it very well. I'm not a huge fan of Greninja. I played Greninja at the World Championships last year and just ended up doing really badly with it. Played against a bunch, bunch of Trevenant Break decks and just was never able to set up or get things going quite right. But I think this Greninja Break, as far as Greninja Breaks go, uh, Greninja Break decks go, is very strong, and I've been very impressed with how it functions. So let's take a look at Alex's list that he was able to do so well with. First of all, you'll see Alex plays a Talonflame Break and four Talonflame. Talonflame is amazing because of this Gale Wings ability. So if this Pokemon's in your hand, when you are setting up to play, you may put a face down as your active Pokemon. So you could start Talonflame as your active Pokemon. And this is the version of, Ta of Greninja Break that did so well at the World Championships last year. It played for Talonflame, and Talonflame was able to use that Gale Wings ability to start off the game and kind of not only act as a shield protecting your Froakies from incoming attacks during the first couple turns of the game, but also allowing you to set up with this Arrow Blitz attack. Arrow Blitz for just one colorless energy allows you to search your deck for up to two cards, put them into your hand shuffle your deck afterwards. Super useful attack, very good for getting set up. Talonflame also has free retreat, 130 hit points, great stats on a Pokemon that you could just start without having to evolve and get going. Now, you will see that we do play one Talonflame break. This might seem kind of funny because you don't play any fire energies in here, so you're definitely not gonna be using that flare blitz attack. But Talonflame break does give you a huge boost in hit points raising your hit points to 170. Whoop. Excuse me there. Raising your hit points to 170, which is just awesome, very difficult to take down, and also giving your Talon Flame a very useful fire attacker. So, it turns it into fire type, which means that you are now hitting grass type pokemon or fire weak pokemon like Metagross for weakness. So, if you're using Arrow Blitz with Talon Flame Break, you are hitting for base 80 damage against a fire weak Pokemon. If you have a choice band attached, you're hitting for base 140, which is just outrageous, right? 140 damage with an Arrow Blitz being able to search your deck for two other cards. Very, very good. I was just testing this game, this deck out online. I was able to beat a Lorantis deck, which seems like that should be a horrible matchup, right? But I was able to beat Lorantis just because of that Talonflame break. Now, because of the fact that we play Talonflame, we do play a three, four, four, three Greninja break line. Now, the reason we play only three Froakies is because if you cut down on the amount of Froakies that you play, you increase your chances of starting Talonflame, who is your ideal starter. So we only play three Froakie because you want to start Talonflame, and then you want to get your Froakie out, and really Froakie is just going to evolve into Frogadier, who uses that Water Duplicates attack. And Water Duplicates searches your deck for up to three Frogadier and puts them onto your bench. And this is gonna be how you really set up your board position. Most games, you wanna start Talonflame Break. If you're going second, you can get a turn one Arrow Blitz to go grab cards that you need out of your deck to continue uh, to set up. And then you're gonna go for a turn two Water Duplicates. Now, on turns that you go first, you have the option of either going for a turn two Water Duplicates or turn to Arrow Blitz. Each game is gonna kinda play out differently and you'll be able to decide which one is the way to go. Most games, however, you're going to be going for a turn to Water Duplicates. And then you could retreat back into Talonflame once you've evolved a Frogadier up into Greninja. Greninja has free retreat, which is awesome. And retreat back into Talonflame and then Arrow Blitz, perhaps while you set up more Greninja breaks. So. The whole idea of the deck is to get as many Greninja and Greninja Break into play as possible. So let's take a look at these cards. Greninja 
is very strong stage two Pokemon. Shadow Stitching is an insane attack in its own right. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, each Pokemon in play or in their hand or in their discard pile has no ability. So it shuts off abilities for a turn for one energy it's a great attack. You could Shadow Stitch for 70 with Choice Band against Pokemon EX and GX, which is just piling on a lot of damage while shutting off abilities. So you could start Shadow Stitching against Metagross, right? And they can't accelerate their energy anymore. You could start Shadow Stitching against Tapu Bulu Vikavolt, and then they can't accelerate their energy anymore. Shadow Stitching, you Shadow Stitch in the mirror, right? When you're playing against another Greninja deck. It's just a big Shadow Stitch show up, showdown, right? Where you guys are Shadow Stitching back and forth and eventually just trying to deplete the opponent of resources or run them off the board altogether. And it's just very, very control-oriented card, which is great because it jives perfectly with the kind of logic of this deck. Then your heavy hitting attack is Moonlight Slash. You may return a water energy from your from this Pokemon to your hand if you do this attack does 20 more damage. So it does 60 if you do the 20 more damage. has it does 80 with Choice Band, that's 110. And with Giant Water Shuriken, which is once during your turn before you attack, you can put a Water Energy from your hand into your discard pile so long as Greninja breaks your active Pokemon. And it does 60 damage to anywhere on your opponent's side of the field. So with Giant Water Shuriken, now you could do 110 plus 60. You could hit 170 in one turn with just one Greninja Break, which is great numbers for taking down Pokemon EX and GX. Greninja Break gets much, much better with the addition of Choice Band to this deck. Uh, and this card is extremely powerful. Because Giant Water Shrieken you can only use once with each Greninja Break, really takes advantage of Greninja's free retreat. So you can have one Greninja Break out, use your Giant Water Shrieken, retreat into another Greninja Break, use your other Giant Water Shrieken, and then Moonlight Slash for just tons and tons of damage. I said it was 170 on one Greninja break. If you Moonlight Slash a second time, that's up to 230. You could potentially knock out a Guard of War GX in one go with two Greninja break in play. So that is very, very good. And this deck is very strong. The whole point is to try and spam these Greninjas, get them out into play as quickly as possible. So let's take a look at the supporter and trainer cards that get this deck up and running. You notice that we don't play any Tapu Lele or any sort of Shaman or Oranguru or anything like that. You only play your Talonflame for consistency and that's it. So you have to play lots of supporter cards. We play four Professor Sycamore, four N, an Ace Trainer, and Professor Kakoi. These are our consistency cards. Sycamore and N kind of go without saying. These are the backbone of almost every single deck in standard format, and they just can help you continue to draw cards throughout the course of the game. Greninja is very good at taking advantage of late game ends since the deck tends to fall behind early and then sweep up late. You can end your opponent to two cards, to one card, and then continue to sweep once you stabilize, get a couple Greninja break into play. That being said, Ace Trainer goes along the same logic. Ace Trainer is each player shuffles his or her hand into their deck, then you draw six and they draw three, only if your opponent has taken more prize cards than you have. So like I said, Ace Trainer kind of jives perfectly with the logic of this deck since you tend to fall behind early. An interesting inclusion in Alex Kreckler's list was this Professor Kakoi, which just draws two cards that adds 20 damage to your, uh, to your damage output per turn. Greninja can sometimes just barely whiff those knockouts that it needs to hit. Like I said, you hit 170 with one Greninja break with one giant water shuriken and a moonlight slash. So Professor Kakoi can get you right up over that 170 barrier to 180, which knocks out a handful of useful Pokemon like Drampa. Kakoi is just nice to have for an additional damage buff, especially against mega Pokemon as well. Just being able to take those down easier because of your additional damage output. We also play a Fisherman. This is an old school Fisherman, you can see, from the e-reader era, but the text stays the same. You get four basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. So this is great for continuing to stream those giant water shriekens throughout the course of the game. Also play one Lysander. Actually, Greninja gets a great buff with the addition of Burning Shadows, and that is Guzma, so, or Guzma, however you want to call it. Guzma pretty much takes Lysander's place wholesale in this deck and just allows you to switch your own Pokemon, allowing you to get another giant water shuriken since you can only 
you could get a third potentially if you have three Greninja breaks set up. You could get three giant water shriekins in one play in one turn with Guzma. But he does play the one Lysander, just allowing you to target down your opponent's Pokemon. We only play one Lysander because you don't need two. I mean, your your Greninja break naturally snipes Pokemon, so you don't really need to bring up Pokemon as often as other decks do because you have the option to snipe them on the bench with your giant water shriek and attack. That being said. Lystander, still very useful for just being able to Moonlight Slash or Shadow Stitch, the appropriate Pokemon. That's it for our supporters. And I really love the items that Alex played in his list. He plays four Dive Ball, two Ultra Ball, four VS Seeker, two Field Blower, two Rare Candy, two Choice Band, Two max potion and he plays two recovery cards a super rod and a rescue stretcher i really like that alex plays all these two ofs i think that two ofs are great in this capacity right i mean he's got just enough consistency here where you're going to see these cards enough they're not one ofs so you're going to see them enough that they are effective and useful on a very consistent basis but look how many he's got I think this is really neat. So obviously up top here, these are our consistency cards. You wanna play the four dive ball just to get your Greninjas and your Frogadiers and your Greninja breaks. It's a no brainer, right? Dive ball rotates actually is takes a pretty big chunk out of Greninja's consistency and viability as a deck, but we do still have Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is good in this deck because it allows you to get those Talon Flames out of your hand and into the discard pile so that you don't draw into them later in the game. Ultra Ball, also great, just for being able to search out Pokemon and added consistency. But you do want something that's going to be able to help you discard those Talon Flames so that you don't draw into them later, so they don't clog up your hands. Versus Seeker, obviously just a great card, getting those supporters out of the discard, giving you that, that, that choice as to what you want to play for your supporter for turn throughout the course of the game. Now you'll notice he plays two Field Blower. Field Blower in conjunction with Talonflame is really excellent because Talonflame can search out your Field Blower to deal with Garbodor, Garbotoxin Garbodor early on so that you can Field Blower at the correct time and help you take out that Garbodor. Sometimes Talonflame will also search out Lysander so that you can Lysander the Garbodor and deal with it outright that way as well. But Field Blower, great not only for removing things like Fighting Fury Belt, but also for removing those tools from Garbodor. That's the primary reason we play it there. And you notice we also, we don't play any stadium cards, but Field Blower kind of acts as your stadium counter since you're able to remove stadiums with it. So Field Blower can even help you against decks like Mega Ray since you are able to bump their stadium and Mega Ray maxes out at 150 damage without their stadium. So if they are not able to draw it after maybe a late game end, then your Greninja can tank a hit that it wouldn't have otherwise survived. Rare Candy, I really love Rare Candy's inclusion in this list. It just helps speed things up, especially with Talonflame's inclusion. If you decide to go for a speedy setup, you can get a turn one uh, Arrow Blitz and you could grab Rare Candy and Greninja so that you could get a turn two Greninja into play. Maybe you also have a Frogadier in your hand. You can promote the Frogadier, have a Greninja on your bench, and then water duplicates. So now your board position is three Frogadier, four Frogadier, or, and you have a Greninja break as well. So it allows you to really set up strong and get and kind of rebound after maybe a slower start. You can start rare candying into your Greninjas, get them out quicker, really love that inclusion. Choice Band, like I said, is a huge buff for this deck, just being able to pile on more damage to those EX and GX Pokemon, which now have more hit points than ever. So it's very important that Choice Band's in here just to help us get over, over those boundaries and able to get those key knockouts that we would be missing otherwise. Super Rod and Rescue Stretcher are here to help just get the Pokemon back into the deck. Sometimes we have to Sycamore, Awkward Hands, discard more Pokemon than we would prefer to, and Super Rod and Rescue Stretcher help us get those Pokemon back into the deck or back into the hand if we're talking about Rescue Stretcher. Super Rod, also super useful, haha, <laughs> super, super for shuffling those energy back into the deck so that you could draw into them and use them for giant water shrieking, moonlight slash, and shadow stitching. Max potions are very good in this deck for helping Greninja tank. 170 hit points is very difficult to take down, especially since Greninja puts no energy, really leaves no energy on its Pokemon in most cases. So since Greninja leaves no energy on its Pokemon, it can moonlight slash that energy right back. You can max potion and heal all the damage off of it without paying 
the drawback, right? I mean, heal all damage, but you have to discard all energy. Greninja doesn't really have any energy on it in the first place. So Max Potion jives perfectly with this deck because it helps you tank and you don't have to discard your energy really because you're bringing that energy back to your hand with Moonlight Slash's effect anyway. So that's it for the trainers. Let's take a look at the energy. I thought Alex played a little bit short on energy. He does play only seven water and two splash. This is very low for a deck like this, but obviously it is enough to get yourself into the top eight of the biggest tournament ever held. So this is just enough energy. I would not go any lower than this, but just enough to get by and to draw in energy when you need. Obviously setting up is important, surviving is important. So Alex had to decide, you know, what, you know, what, what the perfect ratio of tank ability with cards like max potion with, or speed with cards like rare candy and aggressiveness with your energy cards was the perfect balance. And he decided that this was the perfect balance that you can get by with just seven water and two splash. And so long as you manage your resources appropriately, you can be successful with this deck with this amount of energy. Traditionally, I had seen eight water. So this is about one less than I'm used to seeing. Older lists had f many, many more splash energy in them to help keep those Greninja breaks alive and keep the cards back in your hand. But now with the addition of Rescue Stretcher as well, you don't really need as many splash energy just because you have another option for being able to bring those Pokemon back into your hand. So that's it for the Greninja break deck. Let me know what you all think, like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and thank you all for checking it out. Take it easy. Bye.